Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to look at uh, capacitors and uh, how they work in a, a circuit situation. Now, hopefully by now you've taken a look at the, uh, the capacitors videos from before. Um, if you haven't paused this video and go watch the other capacitors video um, in the modules um, so that you have an understanding of what's going on here. Now, capacitors can be a little bit confusing, um, but they're one of the more uh, common electrical equipment that we, we use uh, today. In fact, your cell phones and the, the touchscreen technology um, all works as if it's like a capacitor. Uh, the keys on your keyboard has capacitors in it. Um, the flash in your camera has capacitors. So capacitors are all around us. Um, and, you know, they're used very much uh, or as common as like a battery uh, or wires or resistors would. All right. So to start us off, um, I'm going to create a simple circuit here with a... Uh, one resistor um, and one battery source. You know what? Let's make that a light bulb. Let's make it so that you can uh, see uh, what's going on. All right. So if I click play, uh, boom, there we go. V equals IR. The EMF source here supplies our voltage V. Uh, you see the moving electrons. Notice that they're not moving too fast. And um, that's actually very, very normal. Uh, the, the pushing and the shoving of the, uh, of the electrons within the wires, it's not a, a fast moving thing. Uh, so that's our I. And it's very, very important to know that our eye goes from positive to negative and it gets shot around and it goes back to the positives, okay? Because on the, the negative end, we have like a, a buildup of negative and it shoots it around, okay? Uh, and here we have a R, which is represented uh, with the, the light bulb, okay? So this is a, let's see, this is a 9-volt battery. Uh, and if we were to measure the potential difference across uh, across the, the light bulb, we get 8.99, which we can round up to... Uh, to 10. Now, for the sake of us seeing things, I'm going to make that a 10 volt uh, battery. All right, cool. Now, I'm going to remove this bulb, and in its place, I'm going to put a capacitor. Okay, in its place, I'm going to put a capacitor. So, uh, let's see here. All right, so here we have a simple circuit, but this time, um, Let's pause the simulation, but this time, uh, no resistors, so only one capacitor. Now, from the video uh, before, um, we learned that the capacitor um, stores potential energy. Okay. Now, the the battery or the EMF source uh, supplies the potential, um, and the capacitor stores it. So, I like to think of it like this: if the battery is like a water tower, right? It it has the potential to supply you with water. Okay. Uh, the capacitor is kind of like a water bottle where you fill your water bottle with water so that you could use it later on. That's what a capacitor does, okay? Uh, you store that energy or store that quote-unquote water so that you can use it later on, right? So if I were to uh, click play on the simulation, okay, uh, we see the capacitor is fully charged. Now the black end of the battery, that's positive. The other end is negative. Um, the, the red side is positive and the blue side is negative and it'll always be like that because uh, the negative side here will push um, all of the negative electrons towards the negative side, right? This is a, it's like a pump, right? It's an electron pump. Um, and so all of the negative charges that was on the left side of the plate, um, they're being attracted or they're being pumped away to the other side, right? So the positive side of the battery will always have the positive side of the plate. The negative side of the battery will always have the negative side of the plate, okay? Um, now this was a 10 ohm, or excuse me, a 10 volt uh, battery. And what the capacitor does is it, um, it acts as if it's a, in terms of figuring out the, the voltage, you could think of it like a, a mirror for what a resistor would have. So if we were to have a resistor there, it would have had uh, 10 volts because of the voltage loop. And so if we have a capacitor there, it mirrors what the, the, the resistor would have. And we can see here, it also has 10 volts, okay? All right, so I'm gonna remove this, okay? And let's, let's add a resistor, okay? Let's add a light bulb, and we are also going to add a capacitor there. All right, so make sure my simulation is paused. Okay, so now we have a, uh, a simple circuit with a capacitor in series with that with another resistor. Now, remember what I said, um, this capacitor, it quote unquote, it mirrors uh, what that light bulb would receive, okay? Now, it might not be very intuitive right now, but work with me here, okay? So what the capacitor wants to do is it wants to fully charge up, okay? It wants to fully charge up um, with the amount of volts that it's allowed, all right? So according to the, the loop law or the voltage law, in one loop, um, whatever resistor is there, uh, it wants to receive as much of the voltage that it's allowed, okay? Now, uh, in the other video, we talked about how the when the capacitor is like empty, it acts as if it's, a, it's, it's just a, a bare wire, okay? So if the capacitor is a bare wire, we got all of the current flowing through it, but over time, 
the the charge from the current is going to build up and it's going to actually slow down the uh, the current flowing through the entire circuit. So if the current is slowing down throughout the entire circuit, that means this resistor isn't getting the current required to power it. Okay, the light bulb is power. Power is equal to current times voltage P equals I V. So if there's no I, the light bulb itself will dim down. In fact, it will turn off. All right. So uh, if we have a battery here, currently uh, it's saying that it wants to receive 10 volts. So if we click play. The, it's going to build up 10 volts of potential energy because that's how much this battery is allowing it to have. Okay, It wants to fill it up as much as possible. But in order for that to happen, that means less and less charge has to be flowing through it. Right? Now because less and less uh, current is flowing through, I is equal to zero, and B equals IR, if there's no I within the circuit, that means this, um, this uh, light bulb is getting no current. No current, power, P equals IV, I is zero, it's not lit. All right, so at this point, um, this capacitor now has uh, the ability to, to do work because it has potential energy. So if we were to discharge this capacitor, okay, what that means is that uh, when you discharge a capacitor, you're basically connecting the two sides together. Okay, you're, you're turning it into a wire, essentially. Okay, uh, you're allowing for the charge to flow. Uh, what you'll see is that the, the 10 volts here will... Um, reach down to zero, and then it'll build back up. Uh, and that's because the capacitor will discharge, so it'll have no charge on it, but a capacitor, right, a capacitor wants to fill up. And so we do that, okay, it shoots down to zero, and then eventually it'll build back up, right? So when it builds back up, it should go back up to around 10 volts. Now, um, in class, we, uh, we played with the capacitor and we made it work as if it was a, uh, as if it was a, a battery or an energy source. And so what's cool about a capacitor is if you were to remove the battery and you were to connect it, the capacitor acts as the EMF source. Okay. Now, this time, when you discharge it, all of the charge is kind of like a dam, right? It's, it's holding up all of this potential energy. And when you discharge it, you're allowing all of the current to just shoot across. So this 9.996, this 10 volts of potential energy, it'll it's going to release all of it, okay? It's going to make all the potential energy uh, work energy theorem, right? And so all the energy is able to do work, okay? And it's going to power that light bulb because uh, work is, or power is work over time. So if the light bulb is doing work, it's able to, you know, show off its, its power, okay? So if we, if we push play, we notice that the light bulb, uh, it gets discharged, or excuse me, it lights up, and eventually this voltage goes to zero, all right. Now, with that being said, it's important to know what's happening with the light bulb at all times. So I'm going to to connect the, the batteries back up again. Uh, and if we take a look at the, the battery, okay? So currently, the battery has... Uh, bum, 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 bum. The battery has zero volts, okay? I'm going to put this graph here to show you how the voltage is changing, all righty? All right, so right now, the capacitor is fully discharged. Um, and we're going to see how the voltage for the light bulb, the light bulb is changing because we know, we know that the capacitor will get nine volts. All right. So I'm going to press play on the simulation. Boom. All right. So what we notice here is that initially, as soon, as soon as we, as soon as we push play, as soon as we push play, there was a current. Okay. Because the capacitor wasn't blocking things up. All right. So there was a current. And because there was a current, and because the light bulb is a resistor, because there was a current I, and because we had a resistor R, we had a voltage. Okay, And so we had a voltage as soon as we started at 10 volts. That is very important because that's actually the opposite of what happens to the, the capacitor. And I'll show you that here. Remember, the capacitor has to build up its voltage. Okay, The capacitor builds up the voltage, whereas the, the battery initially, it, it had all of that potential, and then it went to zero. The capacitor will be in reverse. So take a look and sketch this in your notes. Sketch this graph in your notes so that you can compare it. Now, this is for the light bulb. So we'll compare that to the, the capacitor. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's, let's push play. Hold on one second. Let's discharge. Let's discharge that. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. We have, we have our leads there. Alrighty. All right. So we know, we know the capacitor will eventually reach 10 volts, but we want to see how it gets there. All right. So if I push play, boom, 
All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, initially it's at zero volts, but then over time it reaches a 10 volt mark. And you see it's not a linear curve because the, the, the more and more charge that's built up, uh, it, it's, a, it's harder for the charges to build up on the capacitors because the negative charges, they don't want to be close to the other negative charges. The positive charges, they don't want to be close to the other positive charges. So they're going to they're gonna resist. They're going to resist that buildup. All right. Now, if we take a look here, this is the inverse or the exact opposite of what we saw for, for the light bulb. I wonder if we could get another one. Oh, we can. All right. Well, this is cool. This animation does awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to let's discharge this. All right. Okay. All right. So the one on the top is for the light bulb, and the one on the bottom is for the capacitor. Okay, so we know over time the capacitor will reach a voltage of 10, and uh, over time, a long period of time, the uh, the light bulb will reach a voltage of zero. Okay, so that's over a long period of time. But when time is equal to zero, or very, 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 very uh, beginning of the simulation, the voltage of the light bulb is is 10, but the voltage of the capacitor is zero, and it, and it like does a reverse thing. So that if we push play, take a look. All right, so notice that beautiful, beautiful Im like that the reverse uh, image that we get here. Okay, and what that shows us is that as the, the charge builds up, uh, the light bulb is getting less and less of current, therefore less and less voltage. Uh, over time, the capacitor builds up, and so it, it, it stores that energy. Wow. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Lee, I got this. I got this. This is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, and I'm thinking to yourself, all right, well, um, pop quiz, right? Let's see what you, what you know. So I'm going to put a voltage chart back up. Okay. Now, the, currently, the capacitor is uh, it's fully fully charged up. Okay, it's fully charged up. So, predict what you think the voltage graph would look like. Actually, let's do this. Um, once I discharge it. Okay. So, if I discharge it, you know that there's going to be a current. So, if there's a current, the light bulb must have a a voltage. Okay. But over time, because the battery is still connected, the capacitor uh, is going to get uh, it's going to charge back up. And so let's see what it looks like here. Ah, I made a boo boo. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning. All right, so it it charges up, it charges up, it charges up. So right now, the capacitor has a voltage of about ten. All right, and I'm going to I'm going to discharge it on the count of three, two, and one. Look at that! It resets itself. Isn't that cool? I I sure think it's cool. All right, wonderful. So. All right, now let's do let's do a parallel circuit. Okay, now the parallel ones are pretty pretty interesting in the way that they behave, um, because you have to keep a lot of the, the rules in mind. Right. So here we have a uh, let's see what's the best way of doing this. All right. So let's create a parallel circuit uh, where we have a capacitor on one of the branches and a light bulb in the other branch. Okay. Now. Um, if this were another light bulb, according to the parallel rules and the loop rule, right, and the voltage rule, um, both of the light bulbs should receive all 10 volts. So is that true for a capacitor? All right, so if we put the, the voltmeter there, let's push play. Wow, look at that. It does hold true. Okay, and we can see that there is still a current here. So because there's a current there, um, the top light bulb, um, well, it should receive all 10 volts because it's, it's another loop already. Okay. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but when I did the simulation, the, the battery exploded. If you didn't see it, pause it and go back. Uh, and, and that's because we created what, what's called a short circuit. Basically, uh, what a short circuit means is that in the equation B equals IR, you're not giving it a R, right? So there's there's the too much I, right? And so it runs really, really fast. And that's that's how you burn down houses and stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna add uh, we're gonna add a, a light bulb here. All right, we'll add a, a light bulb there. We'll add a resistor. Okay. So oh boy. Oh boy. All right, so, okay. So we added a resistor. Okay, I'm gonna pause the simulation. Let's discharge this. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> according to the, the parallel rules, okay? Imagine that the capacitor isn't there. According to the parallel rules, um, if we had a light bulb there and a light bulb there, both light bulbs should receive the 10 volts, okay? But now we have a capacitor. So let's see how, how things operate. All right, so I'm gonna put my voltmeter there. All right, look at this. Wow, that, that is that is amazing. You'll notice if we're taking a look at the two individual loops, the top loop still has a current, whereas the, the middle loop or the inner loop, the current is basically zero. And the current is basically zero because we have a capacitor there. The capacitor is preventing the current to flow through. 
okay? But the, uh, but the voltage is, is 10 because of the loop rule. Remember, it mirrors what a resistor would receive, okay? So it's, you know, it's as if you, we just had a wire there, okay? So at that point, we have 10 volts for that capacitor, and this top bulb has a voltage of 10 as well, okay? Wow. That's, that's really nifty. Uh, now, what about this middle bulb? This middle bulb currently has no current, and therefore, if there is no I, and there's an R, okay, if I is zero, we have some value of R, we have uh, zero volts, and wow, look at that. In fact, we do have uh, zero volts, okay? All right, uh, so, you know, take the time, play this on your own, explore, uh, but I, I do want to, to show you the, uh, the, volt, the voltage chart um, that we can see here. Okay, so that's going to be for the capacitor. This one is going to be for, uh, let's see, i got to reverse it. This one's going to be for the light bulb in the middle. And we'll do, you know, just for fun, uh, we'll do uh, a voltage chart for this top bulb right there. Okay, all right, so I'm going to pause the simulation, I'm going to discharge it. All right, ready? Okay, so push play, push play. Ah, wow. So down here, uh, for the capacitor and for the light bulb, we got the, the very familiar shape. And that's because the current is eventually reaching zero as the capacitor is filled. But according to the top bulb, the top bulb's voltage, the top bulb's current, it was never affected. It was never affected. Wow, that's that's really cool. That is that is stupendous. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, all right, Mr. Lee, like, I'm getting this. I am, I'm actually getting this. Uh, this, is, this is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, if... If, if you're anything like me, you might be thinking to yourself, but what's happening with the current, right? What's happening with the current? So um, up here, we have a current graph for the top bulb. Down here, we're going to have a current graph for the, the middle row, okay? So what we do know is that eventually the current for the middle row, uh, it'll reach zero. But what's going to happen? Because, um, you know, for a parallel, for a parallel uh, circuit, if this right chart here is for the turn current, for a parallel circuit, uh, when, when it splits, the current splits, okay? And so what's gonna happen to the top loop? Is it going to be the full total current, okay? And if it is, this graph should mirror this graph, or is it going to be a split between the, uh, between the top current and the middle current here? And so if this graph, this graph plus this graph, it should equal that graph, and eventually, you know, it'll shift. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's see if the top loop, its current increases as the middle loop decreases the current. Oh. Whoa. Now, wow, this, this is nifty. All right, so what I see here is that the top loop, it has a constant current of negative one. The, the middle loop, it started off at, ne at negative one, but eventually it reached zero, and you know we we knew about that. We knew that the current would reach zero, and if we take a look at the, the total current, the total current initially started at negative two or two, and that should make sense because initially the current between the middle row and the top row was negative one and negative one, so the total had to be negative two. But when the current in the middle row died out, that means that the total current it it, it had to be one because that was the only current flowing through. Wow. That, that is that is amazing. So what that shows me is that this parallel circuit, it turned into a simple circuit. That is that is cool. All right, so I'm gonna, let's reset this, okay? Now, <clears throat> what we can do now is we can come up with some pretty complex scenarios, right? So uh, let's do a, a EMF source, okay, follow along. And, you know, draw the schematic if you want uh, at home. Let's do schematic view. We have an EMF source. Uh, let's create a, a resistor here, all right? Let's do a resistor right there. And we're going to, we're going to do what the eight people love to do. We're gonna make things fun with the capital F-U-N. Okay, and then we're gonna put a switch right there. Yeah, let's put a switch right there. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Lee, why, why would you do this to us? Uh, to which I would reply, uh, because, these are the kinds of things that you're going to see. These are the kinds of the things that you're going to see on the exam, okay? Uh, because this stuff is what gets you thinking. All right. All right. Okay. Connect that. Boom. All right. So what's this monster? What is this monster? You might be thinking to yourself. All right. So this monster is a, uh, we have a resistor and a capacitor. Um, oops. Actually, made a boo-boo. 
Uh, let's put another light bulb there. Okay, there we go. All right, so here we have a, we have two loops, okay? So when the switch is open, we have one simple circuit with one resistor and one capacitor. Um, and we have, when the switch is closed, we have a, we have a, a uh, resistor with a, um, a resistor and a capacitor in parallel. Jeez, okay, that's, that's, that's difficult for me to even say. Okay, so if I were to push play, we should know what, what should happen here. Um, this is a 9-volt battery. Therefore, this capacitor should receive 9 volts. Wunderbar. All right, so click play. Boom. Okay, so it's building up, building up, building up. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna build up to nine volts as predicted. All right. Now here's the question: What is gonna happen when I flip on the switch? When I flip on the switch. Okay. So if I were to flip on the switch, I am allowing this uh, this simple circuit with one resistor and one capacitor to change. I'm changing the dynamic of the circuit from a simple circuit with one resistor with one capacitor to a to a circuit with uh, a, a resistor and a capacitor in parallel initially at time equals zero. Okay, so it's going to turn it into a, um, a parallel circuit. But over over an extended period of time, as the capacitor fills up, okay, or changes or or adjusts itself, okay, the capacitor does what it does and it and it, it acts as if it's just a wire. Uh, so let's take a look. All right, I hope you're as excited for this as I am. Okay, I'm going to. So the simulation is currently running. Flip on the switch. It goes from nine volts to it decreases. Wow! It decreases to four point five volts, and that should be no surprise because right now there's no current flowing through the capacitor wire, meaning this resistor and this resistor turned into a series circuit. Okay, and in a series circuit, the resistors they share the voltage. And to prove that to you, I'm going to put a voltmeter across this bulb, 4.5, and across this bulb here, 4.5. Wow. So what that capacitor is doing is it's uh, it's mirroring the the resistor across from it. It's it's like, hey, um, if you were to replace me with you, you know, it's like, you know, I, I could like be you kind of thing. Okay. So what would happen if I were to flip on the switch? What would happen to this uh, the voltage? Would it go back to nine? Okay, would it store more charge, or would it uh, would it stay the same? Would, would, would nothing change? Uh, so let's let's flip on the switch. Uh, would you look at that? It's going back up to nine, because there's no current flowing. There's no reason for current to flow through the top part. So it's as if I got rid of these wires, right? Because that's what the switch does. It's saying, "You're dead. You're dead to me. Be gone." Right? And so what that means is that this is just now uh, its normal capacitor cell. Man, capacitor sure are fun. I hope you had as much fun exploring capacitors with me. Uh, this is Mr. Lee saying good night.